My name is Andy Versteeg. I'm one of the elders here in the church. We welcome everyone here to the service this morning, especially those who are visiting. Uh, if you are visiting, please make yourself known, and please also sign our uh, uh, guest book in the uh, in the back of the church there. Uh, we have a uh, after the church service, we do have a fellowship time down in the hall, uh, where we have coffee and maybe a few treats. So. Um, one thing I uh, would like to draw your attention to in the announcements, which are in the bulletin, but there's an additional one just the regarding the, uh, the stained glass window project uh, that uh, is uh, progressing. Uh, down in the, there is a uh, file in the, or a paper in your bulletin, but also down in the hall during coffee time, you may uh, see some more details, some a uh, little better uh, information on this, and uh, Please uh, consider it um, uh, during that time. Thank you. Good morning. Let's join together in our call to worship, which you can find printed in your order of service. Let us worship God, our Lord and our Good Shepherd. Let us worship God in the name of Jesus Christ, who leads us by still waters and through dark valleys. Let us worship our God, who prepares a banquet for us. Let us worship God. Let's sing together hymn number 265, Hail the Day that Sees Christ Rise, 265.
Let's come together in prayer with our prayer of approach and confession. Generous and loving God, your steadfast love for us endures through all the ages. Generation after generation, you offer renewal and rest to all who are lost or who carry heavy burdens. Lord, however far we have strayed, you have found us and you have guided us beside still waters. You have restored our souls. You lead us in a path of righteousness, and you remain with us even in the darkest of valleys. You prepare a table before us, and you gift us with, with abundant life. O oh Lord, you are our hope, our life, and our happiness. At all times and in all circumstances, you are perfect, perfect grace and endless love. And because of this, we are moved to worship you as the creating God, the redeeming Son, and the leading Spirit. Here now, as we confess our sins, those we have committed against you and against one another. Ever patient God, endless in love and abundant in mercy, because we can trust in your great love and kindness, we confess that while we were created to love, too often we have withheld our forgiveness, kindness, and friendship. While we have been called to be compassionate, too often we are cold and full of judgment. <coughs> While we have been called to follow, too often we are distracted by our own desires and plans. Lord, forgive us for the ways that we fall short and renew a right spirit within us. This we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and pray as he taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, hear the good news. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Be at peace, you are forgiven. Hallelujah.
Let's sing together our children's hymn, number 252, He is Lord. And we'll be singing it through three times because it's quite short. 252. children, I welcome you to come down to the front. Seems like we've got a lower day today, and that's all right. <laughs> because the children's story that I've prepared today, I can also do a little bit with you. So you're going to hear in our scripture readings, Benjamin, you won't, I'm sorry, but you'll hear in our scripture readings that today Jesus says that the sheep know the voice of their shepherd that they can recognize his voice. And because they can recognize his voice, they can follow him. So what I have for you today is a few voices that I hope you can recognize, okay? So I'm going to give you a chance to answer first and tell me if you recognize who the voices are, okay? And then if they can't get it, I'll turn it over to you. So here's the first one. And I'll hold it here so that hopefully it's a bit louder. There was a time when British Olympic medal winners became household names because there were so few of them. But the 67 medals at this year's games in Rio and 147 at Now, could, I, could you hear that well enough? Do you think you know who that is? One of the announcers at the Brazil Olympics? It was not one of the announcers at the Olympics. <laughs> Any other guesses? No, no guesses. Do we have any guesses here? It was the Queen Elizabeth. That's right. That was the voice of the Queen in her Christmas message. So we'll try another one. Maybe you'll know this one. Good afternoon. Mr. President, fellow delegates and friends, it's an honor to be with you today. And it's wonderful to be here in the great city of New York. Once again. Do you know who that voice is? Trudeau. That's Trudeau. That's right. That's our Prime Minister. Well done. Now, finally, I have one that I hope you'll get. Only one never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. <laughs> All right. Do you have any guesses who that might be? That's Darth Vader, that's right. And I had to throw that one in because of course this week, this week we had May the 4th, so may the 4th be with you. <laughs> so this is one of those things that we learn, right? How, how do you know that that was Darth Vader's voice? It's because you've, you've seen him and you've encountered him and you've heard his voice before, right? So when we, when we learn about Jesus, when we take time to go to Sunday school or we show up on Sunday morning to hear the stories of Jesus and to listen to a sermon, what we're doing is we're getting to know Jesus. We're getting to recognize his voice so that when we hear it, we recognize him and we can follow him. So let's say a prayer. 
before you head off, and I hope that uh, you have a wonderful day, and I hope that you'll pray for us as well. So let's say a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time to learn about you. Open our hearts so that we can learn your voice. In Jesus' name, our Good Shepherd. Amen. Amen. Have a great time. I got one today. All right. <laughs> and our thoughts and prayers are with all of the families with children who aren't here this morning for various reasons that God would be with them as well. So let's pray before we dive into God's word that the Spirit would be with us, that we would be receptive. Let's pray. Heavenly God, we open up our hearts to you this morning. We come from lives that are busy in so many ways. We come from all kinds of things, Lord, and we seek stillness. We seek a chance to learn your voice. So we pray that as we listen this morning, that we would hear you speak in your scriptures, that you would pour out your spirit on the words on these pages, and that they would be living words for our hearts, nourishing us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The first reading is from Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, and is found on page 1060, 1622 in your pew Bible. The Fellowship of the Believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet at the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who, had been, those, were, those who were being saved. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 to 25, and is found on page 1807 in your pew Bible. For it is commendable if you bear up under the pain of unjust suffering because you are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To, To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insult at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. He, instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls.
And our responsive psalm this morning is Psalm number 23, which you can find on page 822 in your pew Bible. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10, page 1596. In this passage, Jesus is responding to the Pharisees who have criticized him for healing a man born blind. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him, because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's sing together hymn number 269, Your Kingdom Come, O God, 269.
Thank you. Please be seated. Let us pray together. Heavenly God, I pray that you would move in the hearts of your people this morning. I pray that your word would be heard, that it would bind up the brokenhearted, that it would give sight to the blind and motion to the stagnant. Lord, I pray that your word and not mine would be heard today. In the name of Father, Son, and Spirit, Amen. There once was a Presbyterian minister who found himself on a sinking ship. After it had sunk completely and he was treading water in the middle of the ocean, he prayed to God that the Lord would reach out his mighty arm and save him from this calamity. A short time later, a fellow survivor floated by, clinging to a life preserver. Grab hold, the man called to our minister. No thanks, he responded calmly. I know that God will lead me to safety. The man floated on by, and soon a lifeboat came by with some of the original crew on board. They offered him a spot on the boat, but the minister declined again, saying, I know that God will lead me to safety. They paddled on by. Time passed, and a Coast Guard helicopter flew overhead and stopped, lowering a rope. The minister, through chattering teeth, reassured them not to worry, that God would lead him to safety, and the helicopter returned to shore. The minister drowned, and he found himself at the pearly gates. He turned to St. Peter, and he asked why God hadn't acted to save him. St. Peter looked him in the eye and said, He threw you a life preserver, a boat, and a helicopter. What more could you possibly expect? Sometimes we all put expectations on God. Like the poor, confused minister, we assume that we know what role God will play and exactly how God is going to play it. There are tropes that we have, images of who God is and what God's role is, images that are so ingrained that we hardly pause to consider them. Take, for example, our psalm from this morning that we read together, The Lord is my shepherd. Without a doubt, this is the best-known psalm of them all. It is a favorite of many people. It brings real comfort to us to hear the words, to be reminded of God's strong presence with us, leading us along the journey by the still waters and through the dark valleys of our lives. When we read scripture, we often see ourselves as the sheep, led along and cared for, protected and watched over. The prophet Isaiah writes that all we like sheep have gone astray, a passage quoted in our reading from 1 Peter this morning. And Jesus tells the story of the shepherd's pursuit of that one sheep who leaves the fold of 99 others. When we hear a scripture reading on Sunday morning, and we hear the word sheep, the savvy churchgoer hardly needs to listen anymore. We know what's going on. Jesus is the shepherd, and we are the sheep. This Sunday is Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter. Not only our psalm, but our reading from John is also about sheep and shepherds. Jesus speaks of the shepherd's care for the sheep. He talks about the care that the shepherd shows, 
leading the sheep to the safety of the fold, caring for their well-being. Ah, yes, we can say, I know where you're going with this one, Jesus. You're going to say, I am the good shepherd, and that makes us the sheep. But in John chapter 10, verse 7, in our reading, and again in verse 9, Jesus doesn't say, I am the good shepherd. He does say it elsewhere in John, but not this time. This time, Jesus says, I am the gate. Wait. I thought I knew everyone involved here. There's shepherds and there's sheep. Maybe there's some thieves or darkness, but mostly, Jesus, it's about shepherds and sheep, not gates. Because if Jesus is the gate, then who is the shepherd? For that matter, who are the sheep? There is a danger when we assume that we are always the sheep. Because sheep are, as a rule, irresponsible. They are fluffy and vulnerable to all sorts of things. They do nothing without being told, and they need constant supervision and guidance. These are not qualities for us to be proud of. The, this is not the way for us to shine God's light into the world or to work to build a new kingdom. If we see ourselves always as the sheep, then we see ourselves always as the victim, as the one who is put upon, the one who needs protection, the one that God needs to come and rescue. It is true that we rely on God's strength in all we do, and asking in humility for God to lead us must be our first step. But we are not called to be sheep. The danger is, if we look at the world only with the eyes of sheep, we only need to be able to distinguish two things. Our leader and danger. Our leader we have a good handle on, that's Jesus. So seeing danger becomes easy, too, because it is everything else. If we live like this, we live lives that are closed off, lives of anxiety, lives like sheep. In this reading from John chapter 10, it is not Jesus who is the shepherd. He is the gate and others bring the sheep into the fold through him. I think that here, we might not be the sheep. We might be the shepherds. When we are shepherds, we are looking for something new, because we aren't just looking for a leader and for danger, we are looking for sheep. We are looking for lost sheep, for those who we can find and bring to the gate and to safety. This story in John is a story of shepherds, sheep, and thieves, and one gate. Our calling is not to stay in the pen. Our calling is like that calling that Jesus gave to his apostle Peter. He said, care for my sheep, feed my sheep. As Christians, we are a part of the apostolic church. And the word apostle comes from the Greek apostello, which means I send. The apostles are the sent. We are the sent, sent out to care for the sheep. When we face trouble in our lives, it's easy for us to get stuck, thinking only about ourselves and about God. 
about the help that we need from God and the safety that we find in God's care. We get tunnel vision, like the drowning minister, and we ignore everything around us. We turn inwards, waiting for God to work privately, to reach out just to us. Hallelujah, he often does. But if we only ever think about ourselves, we are failing in our calling. When we face trouble in our lives, we are also called to be shepherds, to look around us with empathy, to look not just for danger, but also for lost sheep. God forgive us for the times we turn away from those who need help and love because our only aspiration is to be a sheep. It is easy to dismiss other children of God and to forget that they are not the enemy. They are just lost sheep. As an example of this, it may surprise you to learn that Michelle and I can sometimes get frustrated with each other. (laughs) And when we do, It's so easy for me to think only about myself. I'm sure many of you can relate. All I can think about is how I've been under pressure, how I'm busy, how I'm tired, how I need to be cared for. I'm beginning to learn that that's not really helpful. (laughs) Nor does it make me feel like I'm following Christ. It is hard And I often fumble, but I do try to remember that Michelle is not my enemy, that she might also, just maybe, be under some pressure right now. (laughs) Internal pressure as well. (laughs) It's just possible that she's a bit tired and sore. I can't just look with the eyes of a sheep. I also had a friend who had the courage to talk with me a while ago with some thoughts on how to improve my sermon preparation. This friend of mine is very gentle, and he's very quiet, and it was clearly difficult for him to bring it up and to try to shepherd me. But I'm very glad for the courage that he showed in our conversation as we shoveled snow together, because it has challenged me and it has helped me grow. And according to Michelle, at least, it's made an impact. I'm glad that I talked with a Christian who was trying to be a shepherd and not just a sheep. So may God give us the strength and the courage to be good shepherds. May we learn to lead the way to the gate. May we care for others just as Christ cares for us, seeking them out, lifting them up and carrying them on our shoulders instead of leaving them to their own devices. May we be protectors of those who are afraid. May we be guides for those who are lost. May we bring the lonely of this world into the fold through our one true gate. And even if we are just sheep today, may we not remain only as sheep. May the Spirit transform us. In Jesus' name, amen. Freely we have been given so much by God. Freely let us return a portion of that gift, our offerings, will now be received.
Let us pray. Heavenly God, we ask that you would pour out your spirit on these gifts that we return to you. On this money and on this food, Lord, we ask that you would work. We ask that these things would go to the furtherance of your kingdom, that people who desperately need your love would receive it. We ask that you would open their hearts, that they would see you at work through these means, that they would not be too proud to accept them. And we ask that as we give you these gifts, you would also receive our lives, that you would transform us into living sacrifices for you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's bring to God our joys and our concerns with our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, shepherd of our lives, we come to you with thanksgiving, for you are our provider and sustainer. You transform our weary and tired souls with your grace your wisdom, and your love. Holy and powerful God, shepherd of the world, we pray for politicians, for judges, and for all who form and keep the law, for the rulers of the nations of this earth who have in their power and responsibility the safety and well-being of your people, we pray. Holy and loving God, shepherd of your people, we remember before you all those who suffer. We pray for children, for those who live alone or in crowded dwellings, and for those with no place to live, for the lonely and for the tired, for those with too much to do, and for those with too little to do. We lift up to you this morning, Lord, the people of South Sudan who have too little water and are suffering from famine and drought. May the works of our church and of other aid organizations be speedy. May they be effective. May our hearts be opened and generous to respond. We pray for the people of Ontario and Quebec who have too much water. We pray for those who are losing property to flooding, those who are faced with lengthy and expensive repairs, that you would be with them, that you would guide them, that we could be a comfort to them as well. We pray for all those who are grieving a loss or mourning a death. Those who are living with an emptiness that doesn't seem to want to leave. We pray for your comfort. We pray for those who are carrying heavy burdens. For those who feel unloved and unworthy. And from the silence of our hearts, we lift up to you our deepest prayers.
Lord, may we not see your world with the eyes of sheep. May we day by day learn to be shepherds. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. Amen. And our sending hymn this morning is number 485, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us, 485. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest on you and on those you love this day and every day. Mm-hmm.